part here. This is where uh, river washed out. Did I ever show you the video of that that I've got on my phone? I've got no. a video of where the, when the levee actually broke right here and washed all the trees out. Washed the trees out in the levee and all that. There's two two uh, bald eagles over there. Yeah. It's yeah. a mating pair. One's on one tree, one's right next to the other tree there. And they got a, a uh, uh, nest right there as well. So, you know, we're Canada geese here and mallards. Here's another bald eagle's nest and another bald eagle in the, yep. in the tree right by him. See there? Yeah, I thought I seen one over yep. here. Yep, there's another one. Here he goes. Yeah, it's an older one. Got a white head and a white tail. Straight section right here of the levee is what washed out in 1993 and made this great big hole over here. This is and this was farmland before, but it actually washed it out so deep that uh, it's made a little lake out of it, a little pond, whatever. And they rebuilt the levee back. They just put it back right here straight. But, so right here is where it washed out in 93, and then that right behind us washed out. Oh, I guess it was 2015 or 16, something like that. 14. I don't know. It's been a few years ago now. Go ahead and turn right. We'll just cut out through there now. Go ahead and get you some speed. We'll climb on out. We may run behind the island over here in the chute. I don't know if the, if the uh, uh, gravel uh, bars are still out. We may shoot a landing in there and land on the gravel. So if you're going in for a, a, a sandbar, you never want to land on the sand, you know, but a lot of times uh, some of these bars will be almost all gravel. There's almost no sand there. It's just all gravel. You can come in and land on those, and uh, you're not really uh, blowing up a bunch of sand into the tail rotor or main rotor or whatever. If you come in and land on a real sandy area like that, man, it, it uh, puts a lot of sand in the air, and you're kind of sandblasting your own rotor blades and tail rotor blades. So... But so it's more of that, not that it's soft and yeah, you'll you were, sink in. Yeah, well, you're blowing the sand up, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, if it's rock, you know, the rocks are pretty good size. You're going to blow the rocks up into the into the air, into the tail rotor, main rotor. <clears throat> Man, it doesn't look like anything. Looks like the water's come up enough. It's kind of covered up now. But it's kind of interesting. You go and land on a gravel bar. Man, this is like landing on pavement, you know. So there's a bunch of... Mm -hmm. Let's come over here. We'll uh, just run down through the through drop the chute here. here. Yeah, we'll drop down in here and see what we can see. All right. There's a couple mating pairs of eagles on this uh, island here, too. This is called Goose Island is the name of the island. Let me just run right down through there if you want. Yep. It is rapid to Mare Bay, 6439, 5 miles to the north, the entering pattern, and uh, Sometimes you'll see eagles sitting on the trees right on the edge, or they're sitting there looking for fish, they're fishing. And there's a big slough on the center of this island. A lot of people aren't, are unaware of that, but there's a big slough that runs about half the length of the island. And, uh, man, the eagles will be in there tearing up fish on occasion when the river comes up and puts a bunch of fish in there and goes back down and a lot of them get trapped. And uh, the eagles will be in there getting with it, man. They get a lot of fish out of that slough. Now, do they pretty well stay with their nest and reuse it? Well, you know, you, that's a good question. Some of them are resident around here. They stay around here, you know. It used to be most of the time in the late 70s and 80s, all you saw were the eagles that were kind of, they kind of migrated with the geese. And when they'd come down with the geese and they'd, they'd take out the cripples, you know, so the goose get shot or whatever. And I had a cripple come in behind when I lived over on the lake. There's a bald eagle right there. Yeah. There's one up up there going around. I had a, a goose, somebody had shot the goose and just winged it. And it came in, went in the field right behind where I lived at on the lake. 
I was on my way to the grocery store, so I just thought, ah, I'll go look for it when I tell I'll go get it here. So I went to the grocery store, and back, and just as I was driving off, I looked over and I saw two eagles coming in on that goose, you know. And uh, so I went down to the grocery store, got some stuff, you know. Oh, there's a little gravel place there. Man, it's a little small. I'll let that go. Um, but the, uh, anyway, in the, yeah, hell, let's turn around and go, let's do a landing to it. You had the aircraft. I have the Where aircraft. So anyway, by the time I got back, I walked out there to the Eagles, and those, uh, I'm sorry, walked out to the Goose, going on down the way here a little bit, we'll stretch it out. And the Eagles had come in and they had stripped that Goose down, there wasn't anything but bones and feathers left, that was oh, it, really? and they had already, and hell, I wasn't gone 30 minutes, and they had stripped that Goose, <laughs> you couldn't believe, you know. All right, come on around. So now, remember me telling you you want to look right where you want to land, right? Well, guess what? Right we got there. a little bitty spot to land, so we're just going to be looking right at it there. So, Carb heat's on. Heat yep. A little bit of left pedal. Yeah, just keep walking it in there. Looking good. A little bit of left pedal. All right, looking good. Cool. All right. Now, just ever so gently, lower the collective just a teeny bit. We'll come right on down. Super slow, super slow mode. Don't want to go backwards. All right, we're there. All right, that's like landing on pavement, man. <laughs> so check this out. If you look around, you can see a rotor wash. Sorry, so stay on here with me. I'm going to pick it up. So now, if you look around here, if you were to guess which way the wind's blowing, guess what? Our nose is pretty much right into the wind. So the rotor wash is only going out in front of us about 20 or 30 feet, 25 right, feet or whatever. Right. Over here. Not even going that far, actually. So we're into the wind right here. So the wind would be pretty much right out of the northeast. And that's what it was earlier, right? So let's look around behind us. We're going to stick our nose, our tail rather, into the wind, wind. which it would be about right there. Look at our rotor wash, man. Look how far out it's going. Right. We'll come on down to make it more apparent. Yep. That's it's going way down the way there. So, okay. We'll just come around. Okay, you have the aircraft. I have the Lower aircraft. your nose a little bit, and we'll be on out of here. Don't have to pull any more collective. You've got plenty pulled in there. And that's what it's like to land out in the middle of the Mississippi River. bunch of detergent in the water, man. What makes look, it? Uh, well, some, some industrial plant somewhere is dumping, dumping a bunch shit. of detergent in the friggin' river, making a bunch of, you know, contaminating the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. They could get fined like you can't believe if they get caught doing that. And they ought to be fine like I'll get out for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Left or right? Man, yeah, let's just head out towards the river there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some Canada geese there on the little gravel bar. There's another good sized gravel bar. You want to land on that one? Oh, you can. Go ahead and stretch out and then turn back in down. We'll land on that one right there. All right. Come on out a little ways. 
All right, make a little left-hand turn. Come up on your collective a little bit there. Down with the nose, we don't want to get too slow. All right, coming around. We want to land just like this on her? Yeah, actually, let's go for this one over here. That long one down there? Yeah, it'd be fine. All right. The geese don't mind. They're pretty much right into the wind here. So. We'll keep sneaking it in there. There we go. Down nice and easy. All right, not bad. So again, you can see, again, lift it up to a hover here. Go ahead and pick it up to a hover. Just keep it pointing the way you got it right there. So you can see, we're pretty much right into the wind. See, our rotor wash is not going very far at all. We don't have a lot of wind today, but, you know, you can see that, you know, it's only going out there a bit. Now, let's do a left pedal turn look behind you. Now look how far your rotor wash is going. Hundreds of feet out that direction downwind, right? Right. All right, so now turn it back into the wind. We're going to depart. All right, I'll lower the nose just a little. We'll get a little departure going here. And we're on the go. All right, turn left, we'll fly behind this little island here. There you go. Usually you'll see uh, usually you'll see some uh, eagles back here too. A lot of times you'll see uh, coyotes and deer out there. to the left there. Yeah, we'll go and pull collective. We'll get a little climb going here. Across the river? Yeah, go straight across the river. Just keep climbing there. All right, go ahead and turn right. We'll head on over towards the airport there. Airport's going to be out there at about 300 degrees, about like that. You can kind of see the building down in the distance there. That's by Kawa and stuff. You can see those kind of white colored buildings off on the on the uh, on the way there. Yep. Yeah. 
So like I say, when you're landing out on the sandbars, you don't want to land on a sandbar, so land on a gravel bar. Gravel bar doesn't hurt a thing. It took the Huey out one time. We were landing. My son was, uh, he was up front with me, and I had, uh, had a girl that uh, owned it, or her dad owned it, and I had her and about nine other people in the back of that thing. And we had tents and beer and food, and it weighed a country ton, you know. I thought, man, this thing's going to have a tough time lifting off, you know. Man, that thing lifted off. I could have put another 1,000 pounds in it got it in the air. But anyway, we they wanted to go over to the island, you know. There was, wasn't any gravel area to land on. I'm like, man, we're going to have to go in right down there where the sand and sandy part is. So I had to come in. You don't want to sit there and hold it at a hover in the sand because, man, you're just making your own sandstorm, you know. Right. So I'll try to come, you know. So anyway, came down there and, and basically planted it here. Let me talk to the tower here. Cape Tower, how about 211 Tackle Bravo? Oops, how about to get on the right radio? That'd probably help a lot. Cape Tower, helicopter 211, Tango Bravo. I suppose it's afternoon now. Uh, Cape Terror, helicopter 211, Tango Bravo. So 211, Tango Bravo, Tower, how do you hear? Yeah, I got you now. Thanks. Uh, we're about uh, five and a half out to the southeast and uh, inbound for, uh, if you don't mind, we'd like to proceed out a little bit to the west and then inbound from the west to uh, Foxtrot, Texas. Way. That works for me. I'll just uh, pick you up when you're over the field. The winds are 0405, altimeter 3006. I got no traffic. You can proceed direct. All uh, right, good. Uh, proceed direct for uh, one tank of Bravo. Sorry about that, Elder. Somebody had the, uh, had the volume down on the radio and it probably looked a lot like me, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well fess up. He probably knows what happened anyway. <laughs> Damn, missed my chance. I could have blamed it on the student again, man. Damn. What am yeah. I thinking? Yeah. You could have. Coming there. Yeah. Damn student. I had the radio now. Brent didn't know what yeah, not to I'll turn. What. <laughs> Glad I never do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a student one time had to, some of these headsets, if you only push them in part of the way, you know, one part's for the speaking of, they don't have a single deal that you push in at all. So sometimes the speaker will work, but, you know, you go in farther to get the mic part. And this, this guy, he, had, he, or he didn't have a speaker, he couldn't hear when he couldn't hear himself talk on it. He just didn't have it plugged in far enough. And he's over, he's sitting over in the seat there, and he's just yelling at me. And I'm like, what the hell are you yelling about? <laughs> well, he didn't have it uh, plugged in all the way, and he just he, he, that something was wrong with the intercom. I'm like, uh, hang on just a second. <laughs> Push it in. Okay, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just hollering at the top of his lungs. <laughs> I'm like, what the shit are you yelling so loud for? <laughs> So what we're going to do, you see the VOR out there, the little white thing, we're going to kind of go out around it, make a turn to the right, we're going to come line up on Fox Trot Taxiway. And the winds are pretty much out of the east-northeast, so it'll be, you know, be pretty much right in, kind of into the wind. Those don't have a lot of wind now. Looks like the wind is dying down. You can see the smoke or the steam out of the concrete plant over there, tells you the winds out of the east there, so... So, you know, if you're going in some place and you don't have, you know, it's not an airport or whatever, you need to figure out which way the wind's going. You can look for smoke, you can look for steam, you know, out of a plant like that. If it's tall grass, you can see, you can kind of see the, you know, wheat field or whatever. Blowing. You can see the way that, you know, water, seeing a little creek or a pond, you can tell which way the wind's going. You don't really, don't really have to have a wind sock, but, you know. That's pretty much out of the northeast there. Hey, I'm L1, Tango Bravo. You are uh, clear to Cape Copters as requested the wind 0406. Land at your own risk. Don't try moving there. Use caution. Yeah, uh, one Tango Bravo, right, thanks. So 040, again, you know, we, we were guessing it was northeast, and guess what? It's northeast. All right, looking good. Just going to come around here and just walk it down Fox Trot there.
you know, 30 or 40 is fine, 40 is fine, whatever, just kind of walk it in there. Tail hawk there. Lots of mice and uh, rabbits around here for the hawks and the eagles. Man. All right, looking good. Just we'll walk it right down. When we get down here. We'll just put it right out in the middle of the ramp. Point the point the nose towards the hangar. You know, sit okay. her down. We'll try that. <laughs> I didn't dream I was going to have such a big learning curve back to this. <laughs> but maybe next time will be a little bit better. Uh, come on down here, girl. All right, now, just get her pointing right into the wind just like you got it. That looks fine. Just ease down on the collector real slow. Bit of right pedal. Yeah, when you come down on the well, collective, it's going to want to, well, that's what I'm telling you. If you come down on the collective, it's going to want to yaw to the left. So, right, uh, yeah, I'll show you. So, as you're coming down on the collective, it'll set it down. If you don't bring in some right pedal, you know, you, it's going to start doing that right there. So, you got to bring in a little bit of right pedal to stop that. Because as you're coming down with the collective, you're taking torque out of it, it's going to want to yaw left, you know. So, gotcha. All right, let me show you another little trick here, by the way. Let me back up. We're going to go back over here just a bit. So if it's really turbulent out here, one of the old tricks from way back is get the aircraft moving just a little bit. It's not terribly turbulent today. Get the aircraft moving a little bit like this slide. and just slide it on. See how graceful that looks? There you go. Yeah. Anything that makes me look good, I'm all for it, man. <laughs> so, you know, if you're out here with a, a really horrible, windy day, it's just all over the place, you know, and all that. So if you get it walking forward about one or two miles an hour and slide it on, man, it looks real nice and it's very controlled. So, okay, come on down with the collective. Roll the throttle down all the way and hold it. Okay, we'll get, we'll get less than 80. There we go. Now you can turn off the governor. Slide your hand back, friction the collective. Come up here and friction the cyclic. Looks like we're on the 7. So let me show you something here. Also, that you know, when you get that thing just about centered up right there, stick straight up and down. That's pretty much the right spot. You notice how smooth everything got? So, if you're too far forward, it gets to buffeting around like that. You know, right. if you're too far back, it gets to buffeting. You know, right about stick straight up and down. It's pretty darn good. That you got it there. Okay, gotcha. Where did we start at? Hell, I forgot. Yeah, let's go about. Let's start. We'll say we started on the eight. So we're gonna come around for a minute and a half. I'm gonna turn the cabin heat off. It's a little warm in here. So we'll go a minute and a half and disengage the clutch. 30 seconds later, mixture mag, don't matter. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, like say if you get out, man, and some, say a squall line's coming up, you know, and you got this horrible wind that's gusting and 45, 50 knots or whatever, and you're like bargaining with God about getting the aircraft back on the ground because <laughs> it's so, you know, all over the place. Yeah, just get it walking forward just a little bit, man, and slide it on and it, boy, it works out so much easier. Plus, the better thing about that is if you're going forwards, you're not going backwards. Right, all right? right. So, like when you have a hydraulic failure, when you have a hydraulic failure, the way you want to land the aircraft is to come down and just do a little run on landing. You don't have to be going fast, just four, five knots, six knots, whatever. You want to do it that way so that when you touch down, that, uh, you know, you're going forwards and not backwards. And that sounds stupid, but. Okay, go we'll disengage your clutch. So, it doesn't hurt to slide. No, you don't want to be going backwards when you sit down with a hydraulic failure. So if you have a hydraulic failure, you should not try to land the aircraft from a, from a hover because you can't hardly move the, the stick fast enough to compensate. And if you touch down and you're sliding backwards, you can, you know, the nose will pop up and you can ding the tail, you know, and damage the tail boom, whatever. So if you have a hydraulic